algebra says that if we want to square a product, we can just square the two things separately. So you can just square the square root and the sine term separately. Well, now this is convenient. The square root term drops out, and now this becomes sine squared. We don't square what's inside the parentheses. <coughs> So basically, when you're solving problems, in most, if you want probabilities, you usually don't want psi. You want psi squared. So you have to do the algebra to find psi squared. All right. Now, what was the question for part A? Uh, what is the probability that it is between f equals 0 and f equals 0? So what's the mathematical expression we have to write down to calculate that probability? Let's try writing down, just in very general terms, in general terms, what's the mathematical expression that we need to evaluate to calculate that probability? Or maybe to just start before we do anything else, could you draw a picture here? Yeah, so let's try to put this into, the, into our picture. Um, which region of the box are they asking us about here? Um, mm -hmm. There to there. Right, so we might as well put into the box what they're asking us about. They're asking us for the probability that we're going to be in this region. They're asking us for the probability that we're going to be in this region. I guess I can go ahead and draw what the wave function is going to look like. So approximately speaking, the wave function will look something like this. But we want to know the probability in here. All right, so can you try writing down the mathematical expression that will give us that probability, just in very general terms? What, what, what mathematical expression do we have to evaluate to find that probability? Is it an integral? Let's start writing that down. That's right. Sub L over That's right. We need an integral. <coughs> and the limits of integration here will be from L over 3 to L. All right, that's a good start. Of, is it of this? Good. Now we'll just start with a very general expression. Just to start very general terms, we know this is the general way to find probabilities. This is the way to find a probability. We integrate the probability, uh, we integrate psi squared between the two points we're interested in. But now we have to start plugging in some more. So we can start doing that. Yeah, so what are we going to plug in for psi squared here? Let's write that down. Good. Now you have to start asking yourself if you can see any way to simplify that. We have to start simplifying this uh, integral. Can you see any way to simplify that integral? Now, we can't plug those in until we actually take the antiderivative. Remember that the way you take integrals is first you take antiderivative, and then you plug in the limits. Well, here we can uh, review some stuff that I think we talked about uh, in previous sessions. Let's say k is a constant and f is a function of x. Do you remember, I think we talked about in the last session, how can you simplify this derivative? That says dkf. Yeah, the derivative of k times f with respect to x. How did we talk about last time that we can simplify that derivative? Into k dx. Write down what you're thinking. Looks like we should review that. The idea we talked about last time is that you can take constants out of derivatives. You can take a constant out of a derivative, but it sounds like when, when you wrote down, you, you, all, you uh, totally obliterated the f. So we can't oh, just eliminate. Over dx. Yeah, that sounds better. The derivative of a constant times a function is just the constant times the derivative. 
of the function. Now we can't take the f out because f is a function. The f we really have to take the derivative of, but we can take a constant out. So one of the lessons that we saw when we reviewed this last time is that it's very important to be clear in your mind about who the constants are and who the functions are. Um, the constants are the things that don't change when you change x. Since we're focusing on x as the variable, the constants are the things that are not changing when we change x. Okay, so here we could just take this constant out, uh, this expression. All right, well, similarly, we can use a similar trick to simplify this derivative. Again, k is a, function, uh, k is a constant and f is a function of x. So, so how could you simplify that derivative? times dx here. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same trick. We can take constants out of integrals. This is a trick that's actually come up quite a bit in this semester of the course, taking constants out of derivatives and uh, integrals. We can take a constant out of a derivative and or an integral, and that'll help us to simplify things. Okay. Well, can you see how we could use that trick here? So you can take that to over L? Yeah, because that is a constant. What, what does L stand for again? Box. Yeah, well that's not changing. This is a box with a set length. Even if we go, x, x is where we are in the box. Well, even if we go to a different place in the box, we're still, the box still has the same length. So let's write down the new expression we would get when we make that simplification. So that's what I meant when I was asking, what can we do to simplify this integral? Well, anytime we can see a constant that we can take out of the integral, that's a good idea to do. All right, um, now we've simplified as much as we can, and now we actually have to take this antiderivative. <clears throat> Before we can plug in these limits, we have to actually take the antiderivative. Uh, well, you learned in um, maybe the second semester of calculus how to take this antiderivative, uh, but fortunately the people that wrote the problem here um, think that maybe you might not remember how to do that, so they're just going to give us some formulas for taking the antiderivatives. So here they actually gave us a whole bunch of antiderivative formulas that we might find uh, useful here. So which of those antiderivative yeah. formulas is the one that would be appropriate here? Sine. Yeah, the sine. Yeah. However, the only way we can, so uh, the only way we can use that though is if we can figure out what k is. So in this problem, what, what is k? k is... Take your time. Because in this formula here, k is the coefficient on x. k is the thing that's being multiplied by x. Well, in this problem, we can see that n pi over l is what's being multiplied by x. All right, so we're going to have to take our time here and try to evaluate, I uh, use this formula to evaluate this antiderivative. <coughs>
Okay, that's good. A couple of corrections. One thing to notice here is the 2 over L is multiplying this whole antiderivative. So we need to put brackets around this antiderivative to show that the 2 over L is referring to both of these terms. And it turns out that since we're doing a definite integral, we're not going to use the constant. We'll see in a second. If you remember from calculus, when you're doing definite integrals, you don't actually need to write down the constant. And we'll see in a second why that is. So we can leave the constant out. 